I think they're very well positioned uh, to win this game, to be honest. Uh, they've been there. They, they won't be very happy that New Zealand's made them wait for them, right? So they'll have a, they'll have a bee in their bonnet. Guys, welcome to the third episode of In the Know with Michael Checker, brought to you by Sporting News and GIO. My name is Brendan Bradford from Sporting News, and I'm joined as always by Michael Checker. We're talking all things Wallabies, Bledisloe Cup, and the Rugby Championship. Checker was a few weeks ago now, a 57 22 defeat to the All Blacks at Eden Park. What are your thoughts and reflections on that, that second encounter a few weeks back? Yeah, it's a tricky one because I, you know, I don't really think the score line. Uh, reflected the game. Um, New Zealand were very effective, very efficient, but at the same time, I think there was a lot of good play from the Wallabies, and the game sort of just got away from them there in that that patch in the second half. So, even though the score was a bit of a blowout, I felt like Australia could take away a fair few things that they could bring again and build on um, for this third test in Perth. Where did you see the All Blacks um, take advantage, particularly in that second half there? Where, where did the All Blacks pull away? They can run it from deep. Um, they've got the support play to connect with the offloading game and they believe in themselves to be able to make something happen. So it was obviously when Artie Sarvia was sent to the sand bin, it was a critical time in the game and <clears throat> they really believe in themselves to still be able to come out of that. 10-minute um, period, you know, with an advantage of some sort, whereas Australia weren't able to. If you looked at the the ruck count, um, for those that, you know, probably wouldn't get into that stuff, it wouldn't be that interesting for many of people, but for people like us it is. I think Australia had over 40 rucks in the opposition 22 um, compared to maybe 10 of New Zealand's, which means New Zealand's scoring from long range and they're scoring quickly if they do get into the 22, whereas Australia aren't being able to be effective. And the thing is, for Australia, lots of really good build-up work to get into that zone. And so from an attacking perspective, I, I do think that um, Australia's got a lot to offer um, and a lot to offer up in, in in each test they have, and I think in the third test they'll even have a little bit more to offer up. What What do you see as the you know the difference in being able to, I suppose maybe set that platform and get inside the the twenty two even inside the half, but not being able to convert you know that many opportunities into points. Well, there's there's no one single answer for that. Obviously, <clears throat> you've got the New Zealand defence; it's stronger in key moments than Australia's. And I think that Coach Rennie would be thinking, you know, that's something that he would definitely be looking at is trying to strengthen up the, the defence and uh, so that they can resist those moments when New Zealand come to challenge them. There are positives to take out of the, the Wallabies sort of two matches so far. Like what, what positives would you be taking out of their international season to date? Yeah, look, at the end of the day, the trophy is what, you know, what you're playing for. So it is important, you know, I think, and and people want to have that that end result. But Australia brought on some players that um, possibly weren't in the picture, uh, you know, 24 months ago or even 12 months ago, which gives them that little bit, a little bit more depth. Their, their aggression and their attitude in um, their carrying of the ball has been good. I think definitely... The way that Tate McDermott played in the in that second game, um, running and probing, which also is a skill of Nick White's, um, is something I think they'll they'll bring a little bit more to. They'll want to just tidy up a bit of the defense when it when it really counts. You know, when when New Zealand come with the with that pressure game um, and that the speed of the the quick ball at the ruck and the power game through the middle, if they need to fight back, which is what they usually bring then that's where Australia needs to just shore up its defence and hold those moments out. You mentioned Tate McDermott at halfback there had a great game. Who are one or two Wallabies who impressed you in that second Lidderslow Cup match? Michael Hooper, is, you know, he's been a standout since his return to Australia. He's been, oh, I think, it would be fair to say he's been head and shoulders above everybody else uh, playing. Valentini's been carrying ball and really being aggressive and denting the line, which is setting 
his team up um, to play a little bit more footy. And uh, who in the black jersey really impressed you in game two? Yeah, Moanga played very well. I think he he handled the game. He's getting better as a as a first five for New Zealand every time he steps out. This is by far and away been his best season so far, I think, in the All Blacks jersey. It's funny that there's a couple of guys who are missing. I think Whitelock's been excellent um, just around organising the team and um, being that sort of rock in the middle, a little bit while Retallick starts to get back up to speed, which looks like he's getting, that is happening for him. They did well against the Australian scrum last time out, really well. And I think Australia will be looking for a pushback in that area this week because it's, it's a tough battle. Australia's got a very good scrum. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of changes to both sides um, this weekend. Uh, you mentioned Mong is out, Whitelock, Aaron Smith are, are all out due to COVID and travel reasons. But there are a few for the Wallabies as well. And I think uh, a name that everyone's sort of focusing on over the last couple of days is, is the potential return of Quade Cooper. What do you make of of him potentially being back in the mix. Well, it'll be interesting to see if he, if he does get the opportunity to play. He hasn't played for Australia for quite a while. He's been playing in, you know, a, a, the second division in, in Japan. So it'll certainly be a step up, but you'd have to think that Coach Rennie has been watching him closely in training and, and if he feels like he's at the level. I do, I do feel like that the young fellow they've had playing has really come a long way. Uh, from from the, the games he got thrown into last year, he took that his first game to where he, where he is now. That that experience and giving him that time in the saddle is has been invaluable. I'm not sure how far away James O'Connell would be. He'd be a valuable person to have lurking around, even if it was just from the bench, because he can cover multiple positions and he's got a lot of experience. Uh, a home match, a, a rare match in Perth. What do the Wallabies need to do? A couple of areas or a couple of key things that the Wallabies need to do to, to turn around this weekend? And I think they're very well positioned uh, to win this game, to be honest. Uh, they've been there. They, they won't be very happy that New Zealand's made them wait for them, right? So they'll have a, they'll have a bee in their bonnet and they'll bring that emotion and that aggression and, and, and I'm sure it'll be controlled as well. New Zealand have come, they will, be, will have been in quarantine, those restrictions, etc., coming out for this game. They've got players missing. And I, I think there's a lot to like about Australia and, and having a real opportunity to succeed in Game 3. Ladies and gentlemen, that is it for the third episode of In the Know with Michael Checker. Thanks, as always, to Michael Checker. And uh, enjoy the football this weekend. We'll, we'll catch you again soon.